Hi there. So there's three things I'd like to accomplish over the next 10 minutes or so. First, I want to tell you a story, uh, in particular our story. I'm going to be telling you the story of a project called uh, Learn, Leap, Fly, and its audacious goal of changing the world. Second, I want to encourage you to do something similar. And to help you in that, I'm going to give you a five-step plan for how you can go out and make a difference. And third, because this is PyCon, I want to talk about Python and some of the ways that this community uh, and this ecosystem can help you do some of these uh, incredibly audacious things. And to top it off, I'm going to do this all in 10 minutes. So why don't you hang on, and we'll get started. So this story starts with a phone call. It was three years ago. It was October 2014. And I got a phone call from my wife. Now, she was on the train uh, riding from Ottawa to Montreal. She was doing her PhD here. Um, and uh, she spent a lot of time on that train. And while she was going back and forth between the two cities, uh, she liked to listen to podcasts. And on this particular day, she was listening to a podcast about something called the Global Learning X Prize. The Global Learning X Prize was about a problem in the world today. That there's 250 million children in the world who don't know how to read or write. Most of those children are in the developing world. And most of those children in the developing world there don't have access to schools or teachers at all. How are we going to teach that many children to read and write if we don't have schools for them to learn in or teachers for them to learn from? This was the challenge of the Global Learning X Prize. And what they were proposing was they were asking a question. Is it possible to do something with technology? Can we use technology? Can we make software running on tablets that could help children teach themselves to read, write, and do basic math? My wife heard this on the podcast and she got very excited. And she called me up and she said, Shell, we should enter a team. And this is where our story starts. And in fact, this is where every story about changing the world starts. It starts by saying yes. And that's exactly what I did. I said yes, we should enter a team. And in one sense, saying yes to an audacious and crazy plan like this is the hardest part of the problem. But on the other hand, it's kind of the easiest part, because once you've said yes, literally everything else is left to do. And changing the world is a lot of work. And the fact is you can't do everything. You've got to be careful about where you spend your time. You don't want to solve pieces of the problem that have already been solved. You want to focus on solving the right parts of the problem. And this can be super scary. The Global Learning X Prize was a two-year-long competition. And for the first year of that competition, we did not write a single line of code. We were doing research. We were finding out what the best solutions to educational technology and literacy were all about. What did they look like? Where were the apps? Where were the problems solved? And where were they left unsolved? And by the time we were done all that research, we'd narrowed this problem down to three key areas that we wanted to focus on. And we came up with ideas for how we wanted to address each of those problems. The first problem, why learn to read at all? If you don't have somebody, a parent, a teacher, telling you you need to learn to read, why would you ever want to do so? And the answer we came up with was, well, stories. Being able to read opens up an incredible world of story. And so in our software, all of our learning activities are based around stories. And as the stories changed, the software does too. As you change to a different story, all the learning activities adapt. They adapt and they take up the characters, the settings, the words, the objects from those stories themselves. And we use that to anchor the learning process. We give the children a reason to want to learn, to explore that story world. The second problem is, once you've got their attention, how do you keep the children coming back? Learning by yourself is really hard. But learning in community is a lot easier. Anybody who's ever tried to do an online course knows this. Sitting at home doing the course by yourself sucks. But doing it with other people is much more motivating. So what we needed to do is create a social environment for learning. So the second idea we were focusing on was social software, the idea that software should encourage people to work together in the real world. And to that end, we designed our software so that it could be used by many children at the same time. And the third problem is this. Everybody's different. Every child is different. They're at a different place. They have different strengths, different weaknesses, different aptitudes. How do we build software that adapts to that? The technique we came up with is something we call digital personalities. And this is a set of technologies we use for personalization, adaptation, genetic variation, all sorts of things. It involves lots of machine learning and data science. And this is where Python starts to creep into the picture. Because as many of you know, Python has killer tools for doing data science. Jupyter Notebooks, Scikit-Learn, these are all great things. But here's something you might not know. Python also has killer tools for building software that runs on tablets 
and smartphones. It's called Kivi. And we first encountered it here in Montreal at PyCon 2015 as part of a tutorial on writing games. I'm not gonna tell you too much about Kivi because like immediately after this, our lead developer, Steve Astles, is giving a one hour tutorial on the subject. It's an incredible framework. It's a great tutorial. I highly recommend you all check it out. But bringing this back to our story, at the end of our research phase, we had a, we had a thought. We picked the three parts of the problem we wanted to solve and we picked our tools. Python and Kivi were gonna be it. And we were pretty sure they were gonna work. But pretty sure, if you're about to spend a year to do software development, is not enough. You want to trust your tools, but you want to verify. You want to make sure they're going to do the job. We didn't want to jump into this fairly non-traditional choice of writing software for, uh, for mobile devices with Python based on a pretty sure. We wanted to be very sure. So we proposed an experiment, one that we called Game Camp. So as you know, Python conferences like this one are followed by sprint events. And our idea was, well, why don't we get together a bunch of people who have never written games before, never used Python and Kivi together before, and see if they can, in the course of three days, come up with some games. And that's what we did. So in May 2016, I got up on stage at PyCon 2016 in front of 2,000 people. I just happened to be right before Guido was giving the keynote. And I pitched this idea of Game Camp. And it was a huge success. We had over 20 people show up over the course of the three days after the conference was over. They did our tutorials, they helped us write new tutorials, and they wrote four completely new games in the span of three days from scratch. For us, this was enough validation. Kibi was the right choice, and we were finally at the point where we could start writing software. So we started writing. And this is where the really scary part comes in, because software is never, ever done. And the, really the only way to get it right is to get it out there as soon as possible. And so in October of 2016, that's what we did. After four months of software development, we took our super alpha software, loaded it up on tablets, hopped on a plane, and flew to Katale, Kenya. We were gonna try this out for the first time with children who had never seen a tablet before. It was terrifying. This was like super alpha software. It was crazy crashy. It was like ideas wrapped in workarounds. And here's the thing, the children didn't care. They saw the ideas underneath. They learned to make their workarounds. They learned to work with it, and they taught us an incredible amount about what our software was doing well and what we still had to work on. In other words, we started to learn. And we came back from that trip, having learned that, made some changes, and went right back to the drawing board. This is the important cycle in building software. You've got to put something out there, figure out what your mistakes were, bring it back, and repeat the whole process over again because nobody gets it right the first time. If you're gonna try and change the world, you absolutely have to be willing to make mistakes. And you absolutely have to be willing to learn from them. So how does this story end? We got into this Global Learning X Prize trying to change the world. As much as I'd love to stand up here and say, hey, we won the $15 million Global Learning X Prize, we didn't quite make it. But we did become one of the 11 semi-finalists in that Grand Challenge competition. Top 11, based on a project that my wife and I started in our evenings and spare time. That's an incredible result. But the more incredible part is the story doesn't end there. This project that we started in our spare times has since grown into a company. There's four of us now, working to teach the world new ways to learn. And we don't know where this is gonna go. This month, we launched Kasuku Stories, our software product, uh, in beta for both Apple and Android devices, written in Python. And every day, we're working to find new ways to get that into children's hands here in North America and around the world. And how were we able to get this far? A big part of that is Python. Python, this community, this ecosystem, the incredible power that it gives us to do amazing things with a very small amount of code, the way that it optimizes its developer time, to use less of that to do more cool things. The way this got libraries like Kivi, which make it possible to build this incredible multi-touch software. The Python events, PyCons and PyDatas, and these sprints which let us try out these crazy ideas. The fact that it's internationalized out of the gate, that we can do this in English and Swahili without missing a blink, because we don't care, because Python supports it. And mostly because we can look around this community and see inspiration everywhere we look. So here's my challenge to you. Change the world. 
Get out there and change the world. Say yes to something. Whether it's global learning or medical technology or space exploration or video games from the 80s, it doesn't matter. You have the power to change the world. And Python and this amazing ecosystem that we're all sitting in has the ability to help you. So my name's Shell Wooding, and I work with an incredible team of people called Learn, Leap, Fly. We're going to change the world, and I sincerely hope that you all will too. Thanks for your attention.